All right, so now I'm going to show how to do the basic programming of this in LabVIEW. Um, if you're going to program it in Java or in Assembler, remember you have to program this specific structure. You have to program this structure. So um, in LabVIEW, there is toolboxes. You can go to Express and Signal Processing, and there is ways just to do the IR filter. You will find them here. You don't have to always do the pole zero. Um, blocks or you can just have a file entering your coefficients and so on but it's good I think that you sh should program this uh, in its most core structure um, as the maths would work just to get a feel of how it will work and um, it will make a better understanding if you have to program it in different languages as I say as, as um, assembler and so on um, so Let's just see, we have to program this now. So there we can see this xn, there we have z minus 1, z minus 2. Now that z minus 1, as explained previously, is these are shift registers. So we have to show you how to make a shift register in LabVIEW. Now shift register in LabVIEW, we're going to start with a while loop. Just say uh, create control. All right, so this is a basic while loop that we've done before. There we've got an input x of n. We're going to make it in this case. I'm just going to make a numeric input for now. Numeric control, we're going to call it x of n, just to get the, the structure right. Once the structure is right, we're going to take this code and put it in our original software. So again, this one, this is normally one that will come from your analog input. So if this is a FPGA, if you program this LabVIEW on Mario or Serial, then this would be in your FPGA programming, because it's really quick. And um, if it's assembler, this would be temporary registers and shift registers. If it's Java, it might be something else. But this will this would be your analog input, the signal that you want to filter. Then on the output there, we see we've got a Y, N. So I'm just going to put an indicator there on the output. I'm going to call it Y. Okay. So we're slowly doing this structure. Yeah. The next thing we need is shift registers. And we can see with there's additions and that's multiplication. So let's just start with I'm gonna do the shift register just now. Let's just do start with that plus there. So numeric, there's add. So we can see x of n goes in here and there we have a WN. Now this is normally not an indicator but I'm gonna just make it an indicator just maybe to get the, the, the format right and W of N just so that you don't get lost in the code itself. I'm gonna put the indicator there in the middle. All right. So this it's a plus. There we have a multiply. That little arrow key means a multiply. So again, under numeric, multiply. So we can see this value from the plus goes there, goes there to the multiply. And then what do we need to multiply with? We need to multiply with B0. I'm just going to right click there, create constant. These are constant values. And I'm just going to double click below it and say B0, just that we know that's the B0 one. And then that goes to a plus, so that you can see there's the multiply that goes to a plus, a add, so that one goes there, the output goes there. So we just did the first line there, we must now do the lines that come from the bottom. Now the Z transform, I'm just going to maximize this a bit. The, this is, as I say, shift register. So how do we do shift registers in, La in LabVIEW? You right click on the side of the panel and you say add shift register. So you right click on the while loop itself and you say add shift register and you'll, you'll get these little triangles here where this is the output and that's the input. So let's just show you what I mean with output and input. Let me just take go back to my sketch. Where is my my thing. All right, so we have a, a input part and an output part. Let me just get my, my sketch.
skate of the, this one, yeah. So we can see this is the input of the shift register, the input and that's the output of the shift register. So the input and the output of the shift register. So the input and the output. Yeah, happy with that one there. Let me just put my pin back. Oops, control Z. Let's go back to lab view. So we've got the input there and the output there. So where's my output? My output, as I say, come from this side here. Yeah. Just make it a little bit smaller. That part here is the output and this part here is the input for the shift register. So that's the in, that's the out, that's the in, that's the out. So from the W it goes to the in. So from the W it goes to the input. And then from the output it goes to two multipliers. Everybody see it there? The two multipliers, the one for A0 and B1. So let's put two multipliers there. Multiply. Multiply two multipliers, so that value goes in this one here, yeah? and it goes to that one there. This one create constant. This value would be b one, and then that value would be minus a one. See where I am in the structure. Create constant, sorry, create constant. We're gonna put values now. It's still zero at the moment, but we're gonna put values in there. So the input goes there, sorry, the output. The output goes here. There we go, this is better, this is better. So we can see we go into that Z block, we go into this is, you can picture this as the Z block. There we go into it, the output comes out this side. And then that one goes to the two multipliers. Stand this part in there, in there, and then you at the bottom out goes to the two multipliers that goes to two additions. Get the add here, yeah. add function there, add function there. This part is added. The answer of the addition goes there. This answer goes there, this multiplication goes there, Let me just clean up this wire a bit. And then from the bottom is going to be the next layer, the next layer. So another shift register for the next one. Remember this is the in. This is now Z2, that's the in. This is the out. So can you see from there it goes to the in. And then from the out it's going to go from the out there to two multipliers. Create constant. This would be a minus a2. This would be create constant minus b1. I uh, sorry b2. The output goes there. Just gonna go back a bit just to try and keep the structure. Obviously, you can clean it up a lot. Then we have no multiply, no add additions there. If there were layers down, we would have had additions down, but at the moment, this would be it. So, yeah, the output goes to that addition there. 
this output goes to that addition there and then this is the basic structure so in the next video i'm going to show you how to put this basic structure now in our software what is important if you add more poles and zeros there would have been more values these are the base structure for any filter so every time you do poles and zeros you're going to get different coefficients that you fall in here but the structure stays the same it's just the coefficients that's going to change